Okay, so here we're going to look at how to find the formula for a sequence given the first few terms of the sequence, and in this case, an arithmetic sequence. So, I'm going to take a look at this example, and I'm saying 8, 11, 14, 17, 20, 23, dot, 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 carries on. Find the 20th term in the series. Now, if you didn't know what to do, you could write out, you know, the rest of the series until you get up to the 20th term inside of it. But that's going to take a lot of time and the formula will work for us. So what we need to do is figure out the important information for a formula, tn a plus n minus 1, don't forget the invisible time sign, and d. So the first thing I'm going to look for is actually the constant difference between the terms to figure out what d is in the formula. So if I look here, that is plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, and it's the same the whole way through. So by definition it's an arithmetic sequence, and I'm going to say then that d is equal to 3. The next thing I'm going to look at is to identify the very first term. Well, in that case that's pretty easy. The first term is a, sorry, 8. So I'm going to say that a is equal to 8, because the first term is a in my formula. So I'm finding the constant difference d, then I'm finding the first term a, and from there I'm going to take that and plug a and d into my formula, because I have a spot for a and I have a spot for d. So they're asking me to find the 20th term in the series, so that means n is 20. So what I'm going to have here is a, which is, I'll write out the formula first and you can see how I substitute these in. So what I mean by substitute is I know that a is actually equal to 8, so instead of writing a, I'm going to write 8, and d is equal to 3, so instead of writing d, I'm going to put the 3. And now I want to find the term that I'm looking for by plugging in an n value, so that's the last thing we've got to figure out, the n value that matches it. So what they're telling me here is find the 20th term, so that's the nth term, that's telling me n is equal to 20. So since n is equal to 20, I'm going to replace the n, with a 20. So n is equal to 20. Now I've got this information and that's going to tell me the 20th term in the sequence. So instead of tn to be a general one, I'm going to say t20 because it's going to tell me how big is the 20th term in a sequence. So t sub 20, the value of the 20th term is going to be 8 plus bracket 20 minus 1 bracket times 3. Now if you plug that directly into your calculator, being very careful with your brackets, you should be able to get your answer. If you want to simplify it first and do it in your head, parts of it in your head, that's okay as well. But you should get 65. So that means if I was going to write out a whole bunch more terms here, I would get number 65. Or I would get a value of 65. And if we also take a look at that here, cover that part up. This bottom part is my t sub n. That's the actual values. The top part is my term number. So again, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And if I kept going and writing more of them all the way up to 20, underneath I would have 65. So at the 20th term, I'll have 65 as a value. That's what we mean by finding the 20th term for this sequence. So I'll go through one more example with you, and then you can work on some practice problems. So, find the 50th term in this sequence. So the first thing I'm going to do is identify a few of my key things. It doesn't really matter the order you do them in, but I'm going to look for d first. So what's happening between all these terms? I'm checking to see if they happen, if the same thing happens every time. And between 58 and 51, well, that's a bit hard if you don't see it right away. So one thing that you could do if you needed to is say 58 minus, the other way around, 51 minus 58 in my calculator will get me minus 7. You'll notice that this sequence is actually going down. Each of these numbers is getting smaller. So how much am I subtracting each time? In this case, it's minus 7, minus 7, minus 7, minus 7. So d is equal to negative 7. a, remember, is my first term. So a is equal to 58. 
and they're telling me to find the fiftieth one, so that tells me that my in is equal to fifty. And I now have enough to plug into my formula. So again, if I had t sub in is equal to a plus in minus one bracket times d, you don't have to write that out that way if you don't want, a is equal to fifty-eight, just showing you directly how I plug this stuff in again. d is equal to negative seven, so I'm going to go bracket negative seven, just to make sure I get that negative in there. in is fifty, so I'm going to replace that with fifty. And this number here, that's going to be t sub fifty, little fifty, because that's the fiftieth term, the value of in fifty. So when I plug these into my calculator, I get actually a rather large negative number. So fifty-eight plus fifty bra bracket fifty minus one bracket times negative seven, and you get negative two hundred and eighty-five. So a rather large number. And that's okay that it's a negative number. If you want to think about what's happening here, again, as my terms keep going on, as I continue the sequence, each of these numbers is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So eventually I'm going to reach zero, and then I'm going to be going into negatives and becoming more and more negative. So negative 285 makes sense. And again, if you need to visualize where that actually is in this sequence, you can think about this. That's my t sub n. Those are my term numbers, one, two, three, four, five, carrying on to number fifty, underneath I'd have negative two hundred and eighty-five. The value at number fifty is two hundred and eighty-five. Okay? So, give a go at doing some practice, and again, just identify the things that you know from the sequence. Sometimes a little subtraction here helps. And as a hint, you'd always want to do the second term, so t2 minus t1. So second minus first if you're not sure what d is just from looking at it. The reason I'm doing that is because if you did it the other way around, 58 minus 51, you'd get a positive 7, but the sequence is going down by 7 every single time, not plus 7 every single time, so you get your sign wrong. So watch out for that. You should get a negative number if the sequence is decreasing every time, and you should get a positive number if the sequence is increasing every single time.